chances. Another lob. Oh, oh, oh. I bought that one. Someone in the room. Look out. Oh, what a dagger. Texas A&M. Over the top. There he oh, is in the dump. Memphis. Say good night. Oh, what a great one. Pittsburgh. Down for Young. Look out. Sam Young. It is. Wow. Ohio oh, State. Good evening, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel in New York. Welcome to the Road to the Final Four, powered by Pontiac, as CBS Sports continues its exclusive live coverage of the 2007 NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Tournament. Over the next two nights, we'll see the Sweet 16 teams competing in the regional semifinals to earn spots in the Elite Eight. And we begin tonight's doubleheader action with Southern Illinois, the number four seed in the West region, challenging top seed Kansas. Then about 17 minutes after that tip, we'll take some of you to San Antonio for the South Regional Semi between number three, Texas A&M, and second seed Memphis. At about 9.40 Eastern time, number three seed Pittsburgh will play UCLA, the second seed out west. And then at about 10 Eastern, number five seed Tennessee tangles with Ohio State, the top seed in the South. And I am joined by one of my usual partners on the road to the Final Four, Seth Davis of Sports Illustrated. Our other partner, Clark Kellogg, is on assignment tonight. He's watching his son's high school playoff game back in Columbus. He's allowed. He's a proud papa. He tonight. is a proud papa indeed and a great dad, and we wish him the best of luck. We'll, we'll hold the fort till he gets back. We'll try. All right, let's talk about these games tonight. Let's begin with Memphis and Texas A&M. Chris Douglas Roberts of Memphis rolled his ankle last game. He's expected to play tonight. He's expected to play. Let's see how he does. I'm not sure John Calipari really knows how Douglas Roberts is going to do. Uh, we all know he's a leading scorer, but you saw that stat, what he did against Nevada. From the foul line, 10 for 12, that's Memphis's big weakness, and guys like Jeremy Hunt are going to have to step up. They do have other perimeter guys who can play, so in terms of scoring the ball, uh, especially in transition, I think they'll be able to pick up the slack. But one guard they don't have is AC Law, and that's why I do like Texas A&M to win the game. Not only can Law hit clutch shots, he can control the tempo. Texas A&M in the top five nationally in field goal defense. They make it a half-court game, and they win. All right, our other early game, Kansas and SIU. SIU lost forward Matt Shaw in the opener, and Holy Cross didn't play the last game. He's expected to play tonight. He's expected to play, but one of the guys who would play in his place uh, in the rotation, the freshman guard, Josh Bone, he hurt himself in practice. He's not going to play, and I think SIU would have been in a lot of trouble tonight, Greg, even at full strength. Jamal Tatum is a guy of Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year, 15 points a game, their best outside shooter. He's going to have to have the game of his life against the Jayhawks, and they're a great perimeter uh, guys. Brandon Rush, first and foremost, but they're getting terrific defensive play from Russell Robinson, Mario Chalmers, too much Kansas. They march on to the Elite Eight. All right, one of our late games tonight is Tennessee, Ohio State. You're going to hurt our buddy Clark from long distance. Well, I wish that he were here, but I'm kind of glad he's not here to hear me say that Tennessee is my upset special tonight. I think they're going to beat Ohio State because of their aggressiveness. When they played back in Columbus, only lost by two points. Ohio State committed 20 turnovers, and Tennessee is now doing a much better job getting to the foul line, which means we know they can do this. I think their aggression on defense and offense, maybe a little bit of luck, Tennessee goes to the, to the Elite Eight. And the last game of tonight, Pittsburgh-UCLA. Well, if it's a grinded-out game, that'll favor Pittsburgh. I think UCLA had their stinker at the end of Indiana. They turn up the pace. It's a high-scoring game. UCLA wins. All right, this huge story on the coaching front today. Tubby Smith announced he's leaving Kentucky after 10 years, one national championship, to assume the head coaching duties at the University of Minnesota effective immediately. Is this a case of Tubby jumping before he got pushed? You know, I don't think Tubby Smith was going to be fired. I think Kentucky really got caught flat-footed on this, even though Tubby met with the players today. He didn't tell them he was definitely taking the job. In fact, he only called the AD at Kentucky, Mitch Barnhart, about 30 minutes ago to say that he was definitely going to Minnesota. That means it'll be some time before Kentucky can find a replacement. Marquette's Tom, Tom Crean and Travis Ford at UMass, I think, will be on the short list. All right, Seth, we'll continue along the road to the Final Four here on CBS after this word from your local station. The southern tip of San Francisco Bay, San Jose, the HP Pavilion, 18,000 plus. The semifinals of this region, the West, Southern Illinois. From the Missouri Valley and the Big 12 champion, Kansas Jayhawks, as you look at the brackets, the top four, true to form, have advanced to this semifinal night. 
in San Jose. And the Kansas Jayhawks bring the offense, the defense of Southern Illinois. It's a tremendous contrast. Dick Enberg with Jay Fellows here at courtside. Chris Lowry, the youngest coach that made it to the NCAA tournament, and that's been true the last three years. Here's his starting lineup. And he has uh, one starter that is on the bench. Tony Young, Jamal Tatum is their leading scorer. Brian Mullins is the playmaking guard. Randall Falker at 6-7, a great labor. But Tony Boyle starts for Matt Shaw. Shaw with an ankle. He may be able to play for Kansas. Robinson and Chalmers in a three-guard offense. Brandon Rush is considered a guard forward. He is their leading scorer. Sasha Khan in the middle and Julian Wright are the big men for Bill South who has taken teams from Tulsa, Illinois, and now Kansas to the tournament. He himself never to the Final Four. The officials tonight are Tony Green, Duck Shows, and Ray Perone. Tonight's game brought to you in HDTV by Harris Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems for high-definition television and mobile media. And those of you watching in HD, it is a spectacular sight as we're ready to go in the maroon. Southern Illinois, the white of Kansas, and the Jayhawks have the first opportunity. And Southern Illinois, as they always do, going man-to-man. -man. They will put great pressure on the ball, switch some screens at the guard spots. This is an outstanding defensive team. Only one team all year long has scored 70 or more. And there's the steal for a moment by Tony Young. Back to uh, Rush with 15 on the shot clock. They can't work it inside, and Chalmers will reset the offense. It's a senior-dominated Southern Illinois team, a very young Kansas club. Down to five, to four. Robinson inside to score. Russell Robinson, the junior from New York City. Southern Illinois making Kansas use the entire shot clock on the first possession, but Kansas doing a nice job off the trap, off a ball screen. The rotation's outstanding, but Kansas passing the ball from side to side finds an opening. Young dribbles the ball off his uh, opponent's foot off right, and it'll be out of bounds to the Salukis from Carbondale, Illinois. The Southern Illinois team, a motion offensive team. They don't run a lot of set plays. They set a lot of screens. They come off those screens, especially Jamal Tatum, who comes off looking to fire, and he's a player that can get his own shot. Here's their leader score, Tatum with a 15-point average. Runs into Khan, the big man, down to 6-5. Mullins with a drive, unable to connect. And it's Rush who has the rebound. And here come the Jayhawks. Southern Illinois looking to jam those rebounds so that Kansas can't get out quickly in transition. Southern Illinois has to make this a half-court game in order to win. And that was uh, Lowry's goal tonight. No shots in within 10 seconds on either end of the court. Wright unable to hit his first jumper, and here comes Mullins on the run. Boy, spectacular move by Wright, but he has to finish it up. He's not a great shooter, and if Southern Illinois can get him taking jump shots, that's an advantage. Falker outside to Mullins. Young will try a three. Rebound rush. Kansas averaging almost 80 points a game on the season. Rush can't get the baseline. Khan up with a soft hook, and it's 4-0 Kansas. Kansas doing a nice job of attacking off the dribble, but that first drive is usually not going to be open. This is too good of a defensive team. You're going to have to drive, kick it out, and be alert to maybe make that second pass. Nice reverse move by Mullins, but Falker can't uh, handle it initially. Spins and uh, up with a shot off a foul, and he'll go to the line. You see Brandon Rush with the nice drive, getting it to Sasha Khan, and Khan gathers himself. And Kansas so big inside. That's where Khan can score inside the paint on stickbacks, a little bit off transition. Randall Falker, the junior from St. Louis, averaging 12 a game. He's a 54% free throw shooter. So when that first one goes in, a positive sign for the Saluki fan. Here comes Matt Shaw. A regular starter, number three scorer, 11 and a half a game. Injured his angle last week in the Holy Cross game, the opening round, and did not play in the win against Virginia Tech. Matt Shaw is a face-up four-man, so he can pull the bigger Kansas defenders away from the basket and make them guard him out on the perimeter. The backcourt pressure from Mullins on a 4-2 start. Anything Southern Illinois can do to slow the advance of this Kansas team. 
is going to benefit him. Whistle away from the ball. A legal pick set by Rush of Kansas, his first. So Chalmers and Rush with the first two Jayhawk fouls. Those of you expecting to see the AM Memphis game will get you out to San Antonio. Time for the tip. That game scheduled for 7 27 Eastern, 4 27 Pacific time. Beautiful day here in the Bay Area. San Jose, the third largest city in the state of California, behind LA and San Diego. These fans eagerly awaiting this semifinal as Tatum way off the mark and Khan will get Kansas going the other way. A long pass for Rush. He beats the defense and scores. That's what Southern Illinois can ill afford to allow. Yeah, they've got to be able to jam and get up and really put some pressure on the outlet passer because if Kansas gets those kind of easy baskets, it's going to be Jayhawks all night long. This has to be a half-court game for Southern Illinois. And what a job Russell Robinson is doing thus far on Jamal Tatum. He is a really, really good defender. Inside the Shaw draws the crowd. Young has a clear three-pointer. He's missed twice from outside. And it's uh, Falker who saves it for Southern Illinois. New clock. Southern Illinois, a very patient team. That's a tough pass, but a good catch by Falker. He's got to be strong with the ball, though, when he gets it inside. Right with a steal. Rushed with a rush. And Coach Chris Lowry on the Southern Illinois bench doesn't like to see that. Back-to-back -back transition, easy baskets for Kansas. And the Jayhawks lead it 8-2. Kansas with the early lead and Southern Illinois has to do a good job on the change of possession to jam the outlet pass. Here's Sasha Khan with the rebound. Nobody jams that outlet pass. He gets an easy pass to Russell Robinson who looks straight down floor with no pressure and gets it to Brandon Rush for the early layup. They cannot afford Southern Illinois to give Kansas those easy opportunities. Kansas off to a four for five shooting start. Southern Illinois 0 for four. Eight to two lead for the Jayhawks. And it's apparent also with a shorter team, the Southern Illinois team needs to hit some threes. Inside, and Falker can't jam it down. Robinson the other way. Falker went much stronger that time. He didn't go strong before, got the ball stripped away from him, and Chris Lowry, his coach, was all over him at that last time out. Mullins from behind trying to strip the ball, picks up the foul. We have a timeout. Four minutes, eight seconds in. Beautiful shot of San Jose, California in the foreground, the HP Pavilion. The early coverage of tonight's game brought to you by Goodyear. AM and Memphis coming in a couple of minutes. We'll get you out there for the tip off in San Antonio. 8 to 2, Kansas leading Southern Illinois early here in the Western region. But look how difficult Southern Illinois makes it, not only to inbound the ball, but to get any kind of pass. They are right up on you. Every catch a step or two further out, every pass a bit longer. Seth Greenberg, Virginia Tech coach, talking about this defense, but they save it to Kansas. With twin seconds right has been blocked as Falker denies. Seth Greenberg said they invade your personal space. A high compliment after the victory by the Salukis over Virginia Tech last weekend. Well, this is a tough and mean defensive team. They take nothing for granted. Everything is challenged. And Kansas is finding that out because every pass has been difficult thus far from the Jayhawks. Down to four on the shot clock. Chalmers inside to Khan and to right. Did he beat the buzzer? No, they, yeah, they're going to allow it at the bench for Southern Illinois. Can't believe it. Well, the buzzer definitely went off while it was in the hand of Julian Wright. And the fans, other than those wearing the blue and red of Kansas, uh, letting their uh, disapproval be heard. And the problem is that's not a reviewable play. With a 10-2 score, Young from the corner hits the three. That's his third open chance at a tray. He connects, and that being the first basket after five minutes of play for Southern Illinois. And you know, Dick, really the only difference in this game are the couple of runouts that Kansas got. Everything else has been contested, and in fact, Southern Illinois has had a couple of steals that they weren't able to corral. No hurry for the Salukis. They'd like to use as much of that 35-second clock as they can on each possession. And they're used to operating at the end of a shot clock. Well, Young was in a hurry as he feels it. Here's Tatum from the side. 
And it just is not dropping for the Salukis on those three-point attempts. Well, they're not necessarily going to hold the ball. They want to use the clock if they can, but if they've got an open look, they're going to pull the trigger. Rush handles a tough pass. Mullins on him. Robinson draws Tatum. Chalmers and Young. Chalmers blocked by Young. Dick, you can see as the clock is winding down, Julian Wright goes up for this dunk after going to the other side. That is at zero. It is still in his hand. That shot should not have counted. There's two on the board, however, 10 to 5, and the turnover as the pass gets through Wright. Out of bounds to Southern Illinois. You can hear the horn before the ball was released by Julian Wright, but uh, a two-point gift goes to the Jayhawks. Sharon Collins enters the game for the first time for the Jayhawks, a stocky, muscular number four from Chicago, and uh, Tony Boyle, the starter, has replaced Matt Shaw. Shaw, with a few minutes of play on that bad ankle, is back on the bench for the Salukis. Russell Robinson, such a good defender. I think one of the best defenders, not only in the Big 12, but in the country, and doesn't get credit for it because he is really big, he is strong, and resolute as a defender. Walker gets it out to Tatum. He fires the three. Not there. Good rebound by Boyle. He scores, and he's fouled. That's just a question of strength and positioning. Tony Boyle doing a great job of getting inside position and pushing Julian Wright, nudging him just a bit to get that inside position. That's a terrific job of watching the flight of the ball and getting contact on Wright. That little shot fake got right up in the air and drew the foul. And more importantly for Southern Illinois, Boyle completed the play. And completes the three-point play. Did not score in 20 minutes against Virginia Tech. Gets three on that exchange and pulls the Salukis within a basket. And uh, Wesley Clemens, 24, now in for Southern Illinois. Wright went out after committing that last foul. And Darnell Jackson, number 32 in white for Kansas, sees his first action. Rush to Robinson. And he drills the three. Russell Robinson averaging seven a game. He has five points tonight. Southern Illinois has got to guard that weave action that goes from side to side. Right now they are getting beat off the dribble. That is not like their defense. Well, double coming at Falker now. He dribbles out of it. Darrell Arthur, double zero into the post now. He is uh, the defender against Falker. Look at Robinson from the backside, knocking it away. And the steal by Kansas. Right through uh, to his form. Robinson making the big defensive play, but then throws it away to Collins along the sidelines. Well, you want to try to up-tempo the game if you can, but you don't want to be in a hurry. Beating off the dribble, and that forced Jamal Tatum to come off of Russell Robinson. He was wide open, and here's where Randall Falker has to be ball strong. He has lost the ball in the post two, maybe three times in this game. That's why Bill Self has decided to come at him with doubles, because he felt like he would pop it up, and thus far he has. Falker out now, and Shaw, normally playing on the wing, now is uh, in the post for Southern Illinois. This is Clemens and Shaw from outside. Good shot. He's a big man that can shoot outside the arc. Nails the three. It's 13-11. That ankle looked pretty good on that shot, and that's what he brings to this game. He can step away and shoot it and pull the bigger defenders away from the basket for Kansas. Darnell Jackson, and the blocking call goes against Tony Boyle, his first. Darnell Jackson, what a body on him at 6'8 and 250. Near the end of tonight's game, as always, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each school in their honor. America's brand supports America's best Chevy and American Revolution. A good job by Jackson keeping that ball high. Tatum was right there to take it. They let Chalmers walk right into a five-foot range, and he has his first basket. Kansas doing a very good job of putting the ball on the floor and attacking, and they're doing it without putting themselves at risk for charges. Young left alone for a three. He's a one for five now from outside the arc. Look at the speed of Collins to score. Sharon Collins, a 5'11 bullet. McDonald's High School All-America, this freshman. And how do you stop that in transition? It's like trying to guard a bowling ball. He's an outstanding football player, once had 250 yards receiving in a game. 
For his high school, Crane High in Chicago. Outstanding baseball pitcher. Inside is Boyle. This is the shot, but a second chance by Clemens. Tatum needs to hit one. He's their leading scorer. Misses again from three. It's off the foot of Southern Illinois. Well, they're getting shots, Jay Billis, but unable to connect from long range, the Salukis. 11 minutes left, opening half. The Salukis from the Missouri Valley and the Jayhawks from the Big 12. A six point lead for Kansas and the field goal shooting. Remarkable contrast, two out of three for KU and just 21% as the Salukis have made only one of eight from three-point range. And that's from their two best shooters who together are shooting 40% on Trey attempts. Well, all their shots have been challenge shots, but with those percentages, it's almost remarkable that Southern Illinois is only down two possessions. Robinson from long range, not there. Shaw pulls it down. Calls out the play. New face on the floor for Southern Illinois, Tyrone Green, number 22. Really not an offensive lineup in the ball game right now, with the exception of Shaw that can shoot it. Holding foul inside. It appeared to be Darnell Jackson. It's his first. Jackson, the junior from Oklahoma City. You know, Dick, we talk about the great defense that Southern Illinois plays, and they are a terrific defensive team, but Kansas is one of the best defensive teams in the country as well. And they probably don't get as much credit as they deserve for being an outstanding defensive club. Absolutely. They're a top five. 37% shooting is what they allow on the year. And just doubling the post, post to post, every time it goes down to that low block. That's Reaching bad. in. Good job by Jackson, and then it was Shaw on that bad ankle diving to maintain possession and call time. It comes at the midpoint of this first 20 minute period. Kansas leading by six. Well, road to the final four headed for Atlanta. Then the next week up to Augusta. Watch exclusive live video from Amen Corner at the Masters with Amen Corner Live and bonus play by play coverage throughout the tournament at cbsportsline.com slash masters live and masters.org. Six point deficit for the maroon clad Salukis of Southern Illinois. And that's going to be an offensive foul. And it was inside away from the ball. Randall Falker had set a ball screen up top then went right down into the post as it was being reversed. He tried to get right into Darnell Jackson and just committed the offensive foul. Falker who fouled out last year eight times and led Southern Illinois five times this year. They can ill afford to lose him. Well, especially with his strength and rebounding ability but also his ability to score. He is pretty darn good in that low post. Chalmers gets around Clemens. Robinson passed up the three, takes it inside, and then throws it away off the hands of Darnell Jackson. Again, Southern Illinois getting beat off the dribble. You've got to stay in front because once you're beaten off the dribble by this Kansas team, it breaks down your entire defense, and you have to rotate. That's where they're going to get hurt. Into Falker, double team. Green, the left-hander outside. Shaw now, big man moving out of the post. Clemens sets up Shaw, long range three, not there. Jackson, almost stolen by Mullins. Collins streaking into the offensive end. Boy, he reminds you of Ty Lawson, the freshman at Carolina, doesn't he? Robinson can't hit the three, and it's Southern Illinois the other way. He does remind you of Lawson with his speed with the ball, how strong he is, but I think he's actually bigger and wider than Lawson. Saw those two play against each other in high school, and that was quite a battle. Mullins took it into the heavy traffic and had it picked away. Southern Illinois is so good at stopping transition. They close out the shooters as well as any team in the country. Collins loses it momentarily, tied up. The arrow points to Southern Illinois. It takes courage to follow a dream, folks. A dream tomorrow. A gifted woman who beats the odds with a special kind of courage. Assignment America on the CBS Evening News with Katie Kerr. 
faces of hope here in San Jose as the winner moves on to the final eight. It'll be Pittsburgh and UCLA. Two great friends, the coaches in that one, to do battle for the first time against each other. Kansas only a six point lead right now, as well as they've shot the ball. And as poorly as Southern Illinois has shot the ball, that's got to give Bill Self a little bit of pause that they're struggling this much to pull away. Ticking down toward the eight minute mark and down to seven seconds on the shot clock. Mullins with five. Good defense. Falker with two, with one. Did he get it off? Didn't matter. Gets his rebound and scores. Well, he stayed with his missed shot and has four points in the game. The shooter is always the one that has the best idea of where the ball is coming off and if it's going to come off. And Randall Falker did a terrific job of staying alert and really going after that second shot. AU with the ball and a four-point lead. Collins. Rush and Wright. Julian Wright, it's a two. He has four. Julian Wright, just a great prospect. He can do it all except shoot it, they say, but he shot it awfully well on that one. And Randall Falker, very alert, knew it was coming off and cleaned up his own miss. Number one seeds, the favorite Kansas Jayhawks, six point lead against Southern Illinois, the fourth seed, 7.24 to go in the first half. The Kenberg and Shea Billis here in San Jose. Southern Illinois off to a cold start for 17 shooting, 24%. Kansas, meanwhile, 60% of their shots. There's a double team on the ball. Tatum able to get away. Oh, he had Falker wide open underneath, didn't hit him. Young for three. Tony Young has a couple of trays, the six-footer from Schaumburg, Illinois. It's a three-point game. Kansas went with a one-two-two three-quarter court press trying to slow the advance, and the trap really bothered him. A whistle and a charge. The foul goes against Mario Chalmers. A charge as he moved toward the basket, tried to dish out. Chalmers' second foul, and Bill Self doesn't like that one. As is Kansas Jayhawks leading by three now, just under seven minutes to go. Chalmers' second foul, so he leaves. Southern Illinois, until that shot by Tony Young, really struggling shooting the ball, yet they are only down one possession. And Jamal Tatum, their leading scorer, yet to score. Falker can't hit it in close again, but there's Shaw to clean up and a foul. And what a great play by Southern Illinois. They are so alert passing, looking for the screener rather than the person coming off the screen. It was Matt Shaw who was setting that screen for Jamal Tatum. Everybody worried about Tatum. And the nice pass to Shaw, who really was the pass that led to the near assist by Randall Falker getting that dunk. He just missed it, and Shaw very alert going after that miss. Falker was so far off the mark, it was almost like a pass. And look at Young underneath the six-footer to steal that rebound, 19-18. The foul was on Khan, his first. Young, to give Southern Illinois the lead, misses everything. In a one-point game now, you wonder if Kansas, who has lost to mid-majors each of the last two years in the first round, did the Jayhawks get a little tight? And the team fouls now could be a factor. Six against Kansas, three for Southern Illinois. So the Salukis will go from to the line from now on. Collins draws the double team outside. Able to clear it to right and right off to Robinson. Wright is going to have to really be a playmaker with this lineup in. Darrell Arthur, the freshman from Dallas, has his first bucket. Two state titles in Dallas in high school. Darrell Arthur and has a chance to play for a third in a row. Another McDonald's All-America for them on the Bill Self's crew. Shaw misses, and there's Young in the pack to come up with the ball again. Well, Falker kept it alive, really going after that hard with both hands. Mullins yet to take a shot. Young on the best. He hits the three, and it's tied at 21. With 5.33 to go, Southern Illinois has pulled even. Nine points for Young on three outside trades. There is no quit in this Southern Illinois team. 
Collins hawked by Mullins in the backcourt just to chew up some time. Open is Robinson for three. Rattles out. Shaw rebounds. Here come the Salukis. A chance to put their nose in front for the first time in the game. A very confident looking Southern Illinois team bringing the ball up court. Dominating the offensive glass, a 10 to 2 advantage. Young has it blocked. That was Rush up high to deny. And then the foul at midcourt. It's going to go against Rush. Oh my. A collision at midcourt. And it goes against the Jayhawks. And that's two on Rush. Getting the ball up. Trying to go over these very long armed and very good defenders. Brandon Rush getting a hand on it. And here you can see some of the frustration of having to get, be guarded for 40 minutes by the Southern Illinois team. They are right in your grill every minute, every pass, every dribble. And you just have to be strong with the ball. Cut through it. So Brandon Rush leaves with two. He's rested in number five, Roderick Stewart. His brother, twin brother, Lodrick, playing for the Southern California Trojans inside. And another foul. This will be against Arthur as the big man for Southern Illinois, Randall Falker, unable to hit that layup. Now the rotation just a little bit slow. After the pick and roll, Falker slipped it. And Julian Wright just a little bit slow getting over there. And Wright has two. So three of the starters for Kansas as Falker gives Southern Illinois its first lead. Chalmers, Rush, and Wright all with two fouls here in the first half. And Wright takes a seat. Thus far in the game, Kansas really hasn't been able to run anything on the offensive end. They haven't been able to get the ball inside. They've gotten some open looks, a couple of transition runouts, but over the last 10 minutes or so, Southern Illinois has shut off Kansas' transition opportunities. Inside to Arthur. Arthur against Falker. And he's going to be called for the travel. Too many steps on the spin, and it's Southern Illinois with the lead going the other way. Ah, to improve your game, seek professional help. Enter and win private coaching with an NCAA coach only at MyCokeRewards.com. You feel like you need professional help after going against the Southern Illinois defense because the pressure just drives you crazy. It is so hard to run anything against Southern Illinois. They take you out of everything you want to do. Tatum fires from three-point range, and he hits. That's a big hoop. Now they're going to call it a two. As Tatum finally in the book, their leading score, and Southern Illinois builds its modest lead to three. 24 21 with 409 left before the half. giving them all the opportunity to succeed. Bank of America. Bank of Opportunity. Jamal Tatum off the ball screen by Randall Falker. Gets into his shot. You can see Jesse bounces up. That foot right on the line. And what a pretty looking shot that is. Darnell Jackson needed to step up there stronger off the ball screen and really get into Jamal Tatum. I'm sure that Bill Self got into Jackson during that timeout because right now I think Kansas has to start feeling a little bit tight. They are really getting challenged in this game by Southern Illinois. Jayhawks jumped out to an eight point lead early 10 2 but Southern Illinois has rallied and is currently on an 11 to 2 spurt to take a three point lead. Robinson with Mullins on him. Every dribble contested. And look at how they get right into the face of the opponent, the defense of Southern Illinois. Collins underneath. Good interior passing. And the basket goes to Darnell Jackson. You're not going to get much off the first pass against Southern Illinois. It's the second pass. Beating the rotation where you're going to be successful. That was a great second pass by Darrell Arthur. Very alert and a great read. Give and go, and it's uh, inside to Falker, and he is knocked down hard. 
And the call's going to go against uh, Southern Illinois for the charge on Falker. And that does not please young Chris Lowry on the Saluki bench. Falker's second. The men from Carbondale, Illinois. Southern Illinois with a one-point lead against the Jayhawks of Kansas with 321 left in this first half in San Jose. The winner to meet either UCLA or Pittsburgh. They'll play in the second game tonight. Here's that last foul called on Falker. Little pick and roll, and it looked like Lodrick Stewart ran underneath Randall Falker, and he was late getting there. Now, those are bang-bang difficult calls to make, but I think he was late. Second foul on Falker. Kansas with the ball, one-point deficit. Southern Illinois leading with 3.13 to go. Good pass to Jackson, and Darnell Jackson off the bench slams home his fourth point. And it's back in front for Kansas. What a hard roll off that pick and roll sequence by Darnell Jackson. Nobody picked him up. A great call out of the timeout by Bill Self. Falker with two fouls is on the bench, and Boyle and Shaw will take over the duties. A couple of six, seven forwards for Southern Illinois. Outsized almost at every position. Tatum inside. Kansas wanted to walk. Kansas picking up their defensive intensity. And that's a good pass by Brian Mullins. And Tony Young rims out, and Young trying to get his own rebound, but it's Kansas with the quicker hands, and Collins is fouled by Tatum. No basket before the shot. First foul on Tatum. Kansas runs a lot of ball screens, and Darnell Jackson going to step out, set a ball screen for Russell Robinson. He's going to slip it here and go right to the rim. And Brian Mullins just a little bit slow in getting over there, but a good job slipping that and rolling hard to the basket. Fifth team foul on Southern Illinois. Arthur. Not there and a whistle underneath. Got Tony Young for a push. The little man who has done a good job uh, with the big trees tonight and stealing a couple of rebounds has his first foul. Sixth on Southern Illinois. It's amazing. Such a disciplined Southern Illinois team. They play such great defense. They are always up on you, yet they do not foul very much. Here's Stewart up for a 10-footer and scores. And he'll be watching his twin brother tomorrow, Lodrick Stewart, as Southern California will be uh, in duty. That will be against, of course, the Carolina Tar Heels at the Meadowlands. Well, you can see the time of possession, usually a stat that's kept in football, but instructive in this game because the longer Southern Illinois has the ball, the longer Kansas is on defense. Tatum, a three to tie. Tough chance. It comes out to Stewart, and then the scramble, and it's last touched by Kansas. Robinson, his uh, foot apparently was on the sideline as he engaged in the scramble for the loose ball. Vic, there's a great example of how Southern Illinois plays all the time. When Chris Lowry has his team practice, there's no out of bounds. He doesn't use a whistle. They play everything all the way through. No fouls in certain segments of practice. They just play. That teaches them to play through every scenario, and they really go after loose balls hard. It's Tatum. Not there. Rebound to Arthur. And in fact, Bill Self this year took the whistle and threw it away when the Kansas practices because he wanted them to play and practice the same manner. And the foul goes against Southern Illinois on the collision with Sharon Collins and uh, Mullins. It's like two defensive backs slamming right into each other. And Brian Mullins, the lefty, they call him G.I. Joe. He goes out with two fouls as Sharon Collins toes the line. Collins averaging just under 10 a game, the fifth leading score for Kansas. Tipped out, second chance to Collins with 1.14 to go. That's where Kansas with their length and athleticism in that second slot, if you don't block them out and move them back, they can tip it back out on you. Not only length and size, but length on the bench. Nine different Kansas players have scored, and that's going to be a call outside against Kansas as uh, Russell Robinson started to drive. As you can see, Messrs. Gumbel and Davis are all set back in New York. We'll look in on that Texas A&M Memphis game. Tournament news, AT&T, Naismith watch all on AT&T at the half. Arthur got the foul away from the ball for Kansas. His first. 
Just overly aggressive on that back pick. Threw too much into it. You've just got to set that screen and let the offensive man use it. Boyle has it stripped. Collins. Then he throws it away to Young, who quickly got back on defense to take away that pass. So give a lot of credit to Tyrone Green, another great athlete, for trying to keep pace with Collins. Collins perhaps going a little bit too fast and turning it over. You can say just about a second, second and a half difference in the clocks. Southern Illinois trailing by three will maneuver for the final shot of the half. They can take it down. Want to get into something about now, but can take it down to about three before letting it go, and then they'll have a chance for an offensive rebound. Tatum with three, with two, with one, and the tip in not there as Green on the backside almost able to convert. And the end of the first half here in San Jose. Number one seed Kansas leading 27-24. We'll take you to Greg Gumbel with AT&T of the half after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA final. CBS Sports presents AT&T at the half. Singular is now the new AT&T. Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to our studios here in New York. I'm Greg Gumbel, AT&T at the half, and at the half in San Jose, Kansas leads Southern Illinois 27-24. Back at the Western Regional in San Jose, the tip of San Francisco Bay, the city by the bay, 45 miles to the north. Kansas leading by three as we get ready for the second half, and here's the in-game box score powered by CSTV, the 24-hour college sports channel. Three threes for Tony Young gives him the lead for Southern Illinois with nine. But how about the Kansas balance, minimal <laughs> balance from five to two points, nine different players scoring. And now let's take a look, Jay Billis, at the power aid option. Early in that first half, Kansas with a little pick and roll play. The roll man, Sasha Khan, gets the ball late in the shot clock. And Julian Wright, after he gets the pass, goes to the other side of the basket, still in his hand when the clock hits 0-0. That shot should not have counted. We'll see how it plays Jay Billis as this game progresses. But for Southern Illinois, the good news, even though they shot under 30 percent, they're playing at the Saluki pace. It is their pace and their defense has been spectacular. They've done a great job of forcing turnovers. Ten Kansas turnovers. That's led to 13 points for Southern Illinois. Even though Southern Illinois shot 27 percent, they did a great job on the, off the offensive glass. Ten offensive rebounds, ten second chance points. The hustle stats are going Southern Illinois' way. Same five that started for Kansas with uh, Robinson, Chalmers, Khan with the ball now, Rush, and Wright. Kansas really far away from the basket to start their offense. Wright over Falker, who has two fouls. Not there. Falker gets the rebound. He goes down. Let's see if he was injured. He's uh, painfully expressing himself as he tries to get up. Foul against Kansas. See Falker going after that rebound, getting it with both hands, and not sure exactly what happened to cause him to grimace in pain. No foul. It was called a held ball. There it is. There. He steps on the foot of Julian Wright and just rolls that ankle over a bit, but he's going to stay in the ball game. It's sometimes if you walk those off and keep playing, you can make it through it. Possession arrow went to Southern Illinois and Falker with a jump hook not there. Ooh, very close and he was over the back on Khan and that'll be his third. And trouble for the big man Randall Falker. And Jamal Tatum the leading scorer for Southern Illinois averages over 15 points per game. He was hounded all first half by Russell Robinson. Robinson an outstanding defender really made things very difficult on Tatum. He had a few open shots he wasn't able to knock down but looked like he rushed a couple of those open ones as well. As a frustration foul by Falker after missing the jump hook and he uh, goes over the back. Kansas able to lose the ball momentarily and then get it back. Mullins deflects the pass out of bounds. Now that third foul on Randall Falker if he finishes the play he doesn't have to worry about that foul. That foul happened because he missed that easy opportunity he had inside. Finishing plays 
would have helped not only put points on the board, but keep you away from that third foul. So Boyle and Shaw now on the front line, and walking in but not scoring was Robinson. And Boyle clears for the Salukis. And the longer this game goes as a one or two possession game, the jump shots that Kansas takes, they'll get tighter and tighter. Tatum inside the line connects. 27 26 the Kansas lead four now for Tatum Kansas has no rhythm at all offensively and that's because of this defense that Southern Illinois plays Robinson pulls up uses the glass not there Boyle again with the board the lead eight for the winner passage booked and they'll meet either Pittsburgh or UCLA the three seed against number two in the second game here in San Jose tonight. You see the difference in the defense played by these two teams. Kansas doesn't contest passes. They're just solid there on the catch. Tatum with Robinson on him. And he hits Southern Illinois back in front. 28-27. Six for Tatum. He hits two in a row. Well, this Southern Illinois team has guts. I mean, they keep coming at you and coming at you. Rush has it deflected and stolen by Young. Young takes it coast to coast. Kansas needs a timeout. Bill Self jumps to his feet and gives the officials the T sign. Timeout to try to slow down. the Salukis. The dogs on the run with Young heading the pack. The opening of this game was Kansas, a 10-2 start, but Southern Illinois has turned that around here to open the second half, a 6-0 run for the Salukis to take the three-point advantage. Texas A&M of the Big 12 uh, leading by six at halftime, and their brothers in that conference, the Kansas Jayhawks, have fallen behind Southern Illinois by three, two and a half minutes into the second half here in San Jose, the West region. Kansas has to get stronger with the ball. They've turned the ball over 11 times against this pressure defense by Southern Illinois. Kansas is leaving the floor to pass. They are passing with one hand, and it has put them in a bad spot against Southern Illinois. The Salukis have their tempo. This is a half-court game, and Kansas has to be stronger. Mullins with a steal, and then it was knocked away by Robinson. Mullins had uh, 47 steals to lead the Salukis on the season. The Jayhawks leaving their feet to pass, throwing bad passes in transition, again passing with one hand, and that allows Southern Illinois to take it the other way, get some easy baskets. They have scored very efficiently off of the turnovers of Kansas. Tatum with a pass underneath, and unable to save it on the baseline was Tony Boyle. In a possession by possession game, turnovers become even bigger. And for Kansas to have a dozen cough ups to this Southern Illinois defense, that is a significant stat. Meanwhile, Chris Lowry, the young coach of the Salukis, has his center, starting center. Randall Falker sitting with him with three fouls, picked up the third early here in the second half. Boyle and Shaw trying to make up for that difference, and that's going to be a travel as slipping down was Mario Chalmers. But look how far out Mario Chalmers had to go just to catch the ball. Great pressure on the ball by Brian Mullins, and I mean, Trey, he might have slipped on that little decal that's on the court, but he definitely slipped and lost his footing. But the key is pushing him that far away from the basket. Even if he catches it, he's no threat to score. Buddy Young on the outside, and Shaw can shoot from outside. The big man joins him, and now Tatum. And you can feel a little bit of frustration building with Kansas. They come down if they turn the ball over, don't get a good shot. They're playing 30 seconds of defense. Tatum on the dribble. Young pinned in the corner over Collins. And the rebound out of bounds to Southern Illinois. Good position by Matt Shaw, the junior from Centralia, Cal Illinois. You see the time of possession. That's a football number. But if you have the, the pumpkin, you've got a better chance to score. Well, the problem is Kansas can't speed the game on the offensive end by taking quick shots. They have to speed it defensively. Tony Young, the Secretary of Defense, is very offensive tonight. That's his fourth tray. He has 14 to lead all scores. Well, he has just been a man out there. In the second half, this has been all Southern Illinois. 
13 to 2. Inside and score for Darrell Arthur. Uh, one of the many talented freshmen on this Kansas ball club. One of the few times that Kansas has caught Southern Illinois napping. They didn't get down court after the change of possession, and Kansas took advantage of it. Kansas has six points, could be seven if he knocks this down. Foul was uh, Tony Young uh, retreating on defense his second. But those seven points, if he makes this, have come in transition or as a result of transition. That's a pretty low number for Kansas. You haven't caught this Southern Illinois team napping very often. Darrell Arthur off the bench to contribute five points for Kansas. They pull within three. And a whistle away from the ball. A hold inside. It appeared to be Darrell Arthur down underneath his second. I am out in San Jose. San Jose, the original capital of California before moving to Sacramento on a beautiful early Thursday evening. An aerial coverage of our games from San Jose brought to you by Goodyear. So far, the top seeds, one through four, have lost only five games as form is held. All the ones are still around, and all of the top four seeds in the West have advanced to the regional semifinals. We'll see two against three, UCLA and Pittsburgh in the second game. Well, this one has got an awful lot of work to do because they are facing a veteran team in Southern Illinois that is playing with a lot of confidence. Four of six for SIU in the second half. Tony Young outside as they chew up the clock down to 20 on the shot clock. Tatum Mullins. And Young outside with Boyle and Shaw inside. Falker, the starting center, still on the bench with three fouls. Young, tough jumper, won't come in. And a take off the boards by Wright. Look at the big man handle the ball. Collins in at the game now. And on the side, it's Chalmers off the mark, but all alone to follow it in is Wright. No, check that Arthur, Darrell Arthur. He has seven points. A one point game. A little bit quick on the trigger, but Mario Chalmers was open and solid offensive rebounding position by Arthur, who is so long and athletic. Mullins with the ball, the playmaker, shot only one time in the game. Tatum has a matchup he can exploit there. Can't hit the two. Here comes Kansas looking for the lead and a foul reaching in on Tatum. You can still watch NCAA tournament games live online. Get highlights with NCAA March Madness on demand. It's free at NCAAsports.com slash M-M-O-D. Check that uh, Boyle from the backside was ticketed with a foul. His third. So the two of the three big men for Southern Illinois, if you can pull 6'7", six, 6'8", six, big, are strapped now with three fouls. Southern Illinois doing a very good job of rotating after that pick and roll. Mullins working hard on Collins, and Collins pulling his way. Rush open. Nice little floating 10-footer. And Kansas is back in front, 34-33. And you can see there the importance of staying in front to stop dribble penetration. That breaks down the entire Southern Illinois defense and gives up an open shot. Tony Young on a give and go and a struggling to get inside and falling down as Boyle scramble on the floor and Mullins saved it. What a play. What hustle. But how about the hustle by Mullins and the alertness of Shaw to be a receiver. Well they call themselves floor burn you and just at the buzzer the shot and it's a shot violation. Kansas goes the other way. And fans wanted a foul on Collins as he was uh, bumping hard away from the ball. You see Mullins just didn't get it out of his hand before the clock went 0 0. 13 38 to go and Randall Falker returns to the Southern Illinois lineup. Boyle is rested. Kansas in front by one. Falker a junior that's played an awful lot of basketball. He should be able to play hard and well without worrying about picking up another foul. He made a foolish foul in the first couple of minutes of the second half after missing a close in shot went over the back. Chalmers jams his way in and a reaching foul on Mullins. Wow they're playing a whistling a it tight now here in the second half. That's the third on Mullins. Uh, three starters now for Southern Illinois with uh, 
bench that isn't nearly as deep as Kansas. Three starters with three, and uh, Mullins goes out, replaced by Tyrone Green, a 6'3 junior from Monticello, Kentucky. Mullins also one of the best on-ball defenders on this squad. He's physically runs the team. Another turnover by Kansas. Tatum with a pickpocket. Tatum takes it the other way. That'll be a blocking call against Kansas. Well, if you show the ball even a little bit to this Southern Illinois team, they are going to take it away from you. And Jamal Tatum, when he first got to Southern Illinois, not known as a great defender, but he has really worked on his defense and has become one of the better defenders on this team. You saw Chalmers with a hip check and picks up his third foul. Tatum at the line and looking for his seventh point, the son of uh, a father who is a professor of fine arts at Lincoln College. He likes to write rap songs himself, does Tatum, very enterprising young guy. Great point average of 3.64 in speech communications. Said he's only had two C's in his uh, career. Tatum at uh, Southern Illinois, and they both were in African American studies. He had a big <laughs> laugh on himself. Well, he's a very engaging young man, and really the rock star on this team. Charismatic. Everybody gravitates toward Jamal Tatum, and you can see why. He hits both free throws, and Southern Illinois back in the lead by one with 13 plus remaining. Kansas needs to try to pound the ball inside. That's where they have an advantage. Robinson does take it inside, and the easy goal for Julian Wright, the lanky 6'8 sophomore from Chicago Heights. Six points for him. Russell Robinson doing a great job making it difficult for Southern Illinois to get the ball inbounds. He's such a good defender, so tough. Tatum, he won't fall from three. What a rebound by Julian Wright. He is long, isn't he? And so athletic. He's got every skill you want in a player. If he can improve his shot, there's a foul. Arthur inside, elbowing his way to get position in the post. He has three. Kansas has had some success in beating the Southern Illinois team off the dribble. A nice hesitation move by Russell Robinson on that left-handed drive. And that causes the defense to rotate if they don't rotate fast enough. You're going to have an open opportunity in the lane. Arthur and Rush leave. Darnell Jackson and Roderick Stewart return for Kansas. Arthur getting that arm right into the chin of Randall Falker and just extending it. Southern Illinois, the fourth seed, trailing number one seed Kansas by one, and yet their top shooter, Tatum, as into the game, uh, returning was Falker, and he's able to get some uh, soft bounces and his seventh point and the lead again to Southern. Well, he never hesitates to go to that offhand. That was a left-handed jump hook and very well executed. The speed of Collins, the battle on the boards, and Tatum has it picked away and stolen by Collins, and Collins loses it. Boy, it's like a football fumble and everyone diving, and it's Southern Illinois that come away with the ball. Well, like a fumble, possession is the most important thing. Everybody trying to pick it up and dribble it. You got to just get down and grab it. Oh, my. Yes, that was Jim Bellucci, a graduate of Southern <laughs> Illinois, in case you were wondering. Southern Illinois, as we look at our game summary, with a one-point lead and uh, more than five minutes possession. That's what they wanted. Slow it down. They have tried to chew up as much clock, and they've done well on second-chance opportunities, Southern Illinois. Well, they really go after the ball, and they've done very well in turning Kansas over and then scoring off those turnovers. That's what's put them into the lead in this game because Kansas has been more efficient when they've gotten shots up but they've just been turning it over too much inside the Falker back out side to Young for three it's not there rebound Kansas and he turns it over to Green Tyrone Green off the bench has scored only 42 points all year gets the garbage in his first bucket tonight big time athlete Tyrone Green and it's not enough just to secure the rebound they go it and jam you and you've got to be strong with it when you secure it. Collins for three. Good rebound by Stewart inside. 
Transferred from Southern California after his freshman year with the Trojans. Approaching the midpoint of the second 20 minute period. Stewart takes it inside and draws the foul. It'll be against Tony Young, his third. Well, you can see right here on the backboard, there's a little bumblebee or a wasp or something. And right now it's Kansas <laughs> that is getting stung. The <laughs> rebound by Kansas falling down, just giving it up and making it awfully easy for Southern Illinois to score. Great job by Tyrone Green, but Kansas has to be much stronger with the ball. You'd rather get the walk than give up the basketball that easy. You've got to be stronger with it. Wesley Clemens in. Tony Young gets a breather for the Salukis. At the line is Roderick Stewart from Seattle, Washington. Roderick, as he said, will be with the Trojans against uh, North Carolina tomorrow on CBS in the East region. Kansas wants to speed the tempo of this game. They're going to have to do it defensively. They cannot do it by taking quick shots. 80 point average on the season for Kansas, only 37 as we reach the midpoint of uh, the second half. Hands for Kansas looking for a five second call. Tatum inside and a foul on Kansas. And Tatum is so strong with the ball. He's quick, can go either way with the drive. You can see him just getting around Russell Robinson, trying to nudge him out of the way. And then hopping in between Julian Wright, and that ball was touched when it was up there. That's why that you should saw have the, been Golton. The pained expression from Chris Lowry. He wanted two points. He gets one there from Tatum, an outstanding free throw shooter, 77% plus. So, I mean, we're talking about three points thus far. The two that Julian Wright got that he shouldn't have, and they should have gotten two right there. Tatum sights in on his tenth point. And again, a three-point lead, matching the biggest for Southern Illinois in the game. Biggest for Kansas, eight points to start when they led 10-2. The lob pass, and it's a favorable bounce for Kansas as Wright got it. And a new shot clock with it. Ten minutes to go here in San Jose. Beautiful floater by Robinson. Russell Robinson has seven. Russell Robinson, a New York City guard, a junior, and playing like an upperclassman. That's what it's going to take. You've got to play older and mature against this team. And there Great he is with a steal at the other end. And then a deflection by Shaw and a foul by Robinson trying to get it back. How quick are the hands of Southern Illinois? They seem to know how to get it in every passing lane. Well, they've got to understand, though, Robinson makes a great skill. Here you got to see this goaltend. When, when Stewart hits the rim, that's goaltending. That's offensive basket interference. And Robinson with the nice floater getting it up over Randall Falker. But after he made that great steal, he's a point guard. Robinson has got to keep that ball. He can't just... Throw it up there for grabs against such a great defensive team. You work too hard to get it back. Robinson committing the foul, his second. Kansas with five team fouls. Southern Illinois with six. Falker left alone and trickles it home. Well, Darnell Jackson's got to hold his ground. You complain all you want to that he bumped him off, but he can't be pushed off that easily. Chalmers is short at the other end. He felt he was bumped. And another scrum. And there's another yet. Ho! Oh. Floor burn you for both teams. Arrow points to Southern Illinois and the fans of the Salukis. They've seen this all season long. The winningest team in Southern Illinois history with 29 victories. On CBS. Here in San Jose is HP Pavilion. The winner will play UCLA or Pittsburgh, the two and three seeds, to follow this action with nine minutes to go. The Salukis of Southern Illinois with a 43-39 lead, their biggest lead, four points in the game. Now this has to be like sitting in a dentist chair for Kansas. Walker double team gets out of trouble. Mullins doesn't shoot. And a three-second violation against the Salukis. Now just the extra pass, Matt Shaw didn't clear the lane. And an empty possession for Southern Illinois. Those whistles are like a sock in the stomach for the head coach. No question. You work so hard to get the ball, and you want to make Kansas guard. 
but you also want to get a shot up. Jayhawks bring it in. Well Robinson. below their season average. Robinson needs to be careful. He's close to pushing off. Mullen's staying right with them. They can't get frustrated. Chalmers inside, and he draws the foul on Tony Young. So Young of the Salukis joins uh, the parade of uh, men in trouble. He has four, the first in the game. A foul away from disqualification. And there's the Salukis that don't have a deep bench. In fact, uh, one of their reserves, Joshua Bone, injured in practice. He is not able to play tonight. Here comes Tatum back on. He's had a breather. Tatum still looking for his first uh, three-point shot to go down. Kansas has to continue to attack off the dribble to put Southern Illinois in a position to foul where they can get to the free throw line and score some easy points. That might be the easiest points they're going to be able to get all game long. Chalmers averaging 12 and a half with those two free throws has only four tonight. What a battle as expected. The defense of Southern Illinois dictating in many ways an off line pass and the foul committed as Matt Shaw goes up and with his body at 6'7", 225, able without the height to draw the foul with the width. Well, watch how Matt Shaw cuts to the basket as soon as Randall Falker gets the ball inside and Falker, to his credit, knew the double team was coming as it has been all game long and made a very quick decision turning over that left shoulder. There was some question whether this man, Shaw, would even play tonight with a sprained ankle. He did not see any action uh, last Sunday in the victory against Virginia Tech. He makes the first free throw. Here's what happened. Uh, Shaw, an ankle injury in this play, end of the first half against Holy Cross. And he did not play against Tech, but uh, has come in tonight and scored seven points and has been tough on the boards. Well, he looked very good at the shoot around yesterday. Obviously not a lot of heavy practice work for Shaw, but there was nothing that was going to keep him from playing in this game. Brandon Rush pulls up and hits. Rush. The leading scorer for the Jayhawks on the season has eight tonight. Kansas doing a nice job of spreading the floor, and they are just taking Southern Illinois off the dribble. They've got a number of different scorers, Chalmers and Brandon Rush, that can pull up when they get into the lane without charging. And Bill Self saying Rush is too unselfish, way short on the shot with Shaw. Rush four for four from the floor. He's got the ball again. Kansas drills by two, 7.20 remaining in this second half. Chalmers down the lane and then dishes back out to Rush. What a setup underneath to Doral Arthur. Great assist by Brandon Rush. Nine points for Arthur. He averages 10 off the bench. We're tied at 45. Kansas going away from their set play offense and just trying to get in breakdown situations where they can make plays, and it has worked very well the last two possessions. Jamal Tatum still without a three-point conversion. He's 0 for 6 tonight, averaging over 44% from three-point range. Mullins way off the mark, but good positioning underneath, and uh, that's a shot clock violation as the ball did not touch iron on the three-point shot, although uh, you wouldn't be able to convince Chris Lowry, the Southern Illinois coach, of that fact. He thought it might have skimmed the iron. Let's check it. Hard to tell. Hard to if tell. That Timeout. 6.36 to go. 45-45. Welcome back, 45 all. Jay, did this hit the rim? You can tell that it may have grazed it by the rotation of the ball. You can see Brian Mullen's shot. Look at it rotating right when it gets near the rim and ticks it. The rotation goes the other way. And I think that ball did just graze the rim. You'd have to check it to make sure there's no orange paint on the ball. But, you know, awfully difficult to see that in real time. But there have been a lot of those type of calls that have gone against Southern Illinois in this game. Six and a half minutes. They're even. They'll play 6.30 to decide which team goes to the last eight of this NCAA tournament. Chalmers inside. Robinson with Mullins. 
Strong move to the basket. Russell Robinson. He's had a big game, nine points tonight. The defensive star and chipping in with nine, two above his average. Well, he's played great defense against Jamal Tatum for most of this game and in the second half. He's really done a good job of beating Southern Illinois off the dribble. Oh, what a pass inside, but Falker is fouled. It was Chalmers underneath to deny. Ryan Mullins doing a very good job of trying to stay in front of Robinson. You see Robinson just keeps going into the contact and driving Mullins back. That's the way you have to be strong with the ball when you're going against physical defense. That was a great play by Russell Robinson. Not a good free throw shooter on the season, Falker, 54%. You see starter Julian Wright returning, and Arthur was uh, hit with that foul, his fourth, as he reached in on the backside. 47-45, Kansas leads, 5.55 to go, and Falker with a second chance. This is the most. And out of bounds off Kansas. Wright had it. Bumped on the rebound and out of bounds to Southern Illinois. Both of these teams have hit the deck numerous times. This has been a hard played game. Nothing has been given. You have to take it. Tatum working outside looking for the 15 footer and hits it to tied at 47. Well, that was a very difficult shot. Russell Robinson going behind Tatum trying to knock that ball away and great concentration by Jamal Tatum. Chalmers bumped by Tatum on the drive before the shot. Both teams are in the bonus. Tatum putting the ball on the floor and he is much better pulling up when he is dribbling to his left and very much under control going straight up and down. Just a really really fine basketball player Jamal Tatum. Where's number 15 in honor of his mother who played at Winston Salem State War 15. Chalmers also a cousin Lionel Chalmers remember the outstanding score for Xavier a couple of years ago and had some dramatic baskets in the tournament. Chalmers one of the best all around players in the Big 12 and really the country was the co Big 12 defensive player of the year. He's long armed. He gets steals deflections and very very good offensively. Right and joy of Anchorage Alaska misses the second. So with a one point lead as Kansas says we're at the five and a half minute mark. There's Robinson on Tatum again. Tatum pulls up. Oh, what a tough shot. It's not a three. Put on the line. <laughs> Kansas is really struggling guarding the pick and roll with Randall Falker setting that screen. The Salukis lead by one. Inside is Jackson as down went his defender. And Falker uh, had to look up and watch Kansas reclaim the lead at 50-49. The official clearly felt that Randall Falker was flopping on that play. It provided an easy opportunity for Darnell Jackson. Better job by Jackson guarding that ball screen. Well, Tatum, an ill advised pass, and here comes right the other way. Three Salukis are back. If does anyone stop the dribble? Yeah, enough so. And right, almost with a steal on the rebound uh, off his miss. And not a good play by Julian Wright, but a great defensive play by Tyrone Green to put his body on the line and get in front of Wright and force that bad shot. And another steal. This time it's Darnell Jackson jumping the pass. Look at Wright at 6'8", dribble behind his back. Taking down toward the four-minute mark. Kansas with the ball and a one-point lead. Kept alive and the score. Credit Julian Wright with keeping the ball alive and Darnell Jackson with the basket. Foul on Tyrone Green and a timeout. Less than four minutes to go and the Jayhawks surge to a three point lead. Greg Gumbel in New York with an update for you in San Antonio. Memphis getting a fight from Texas A&M. The Tigers' Jeremy Hunt doing his part. He has 16 points on the night. It's a 52-48 lead for Memphis. Let's send you back to San Antonio. Dick Enberg and Jay Billis. All right, Greg, four points there, a three-point lead here. But Rush 
He hits uh, short on the free throw going for the three point play. What a night for uh, Brandon Rush. He has five for five shooting five rebounds and five assists. He had six for seven from three point range in the last win against Kentucky and he's gotten all of his goals inside the arc tonight. Tough move inside and the six seven Falker able to find the glass and it's a one point game again. Walker strong in the post doing a good job of looking over that shoulder and seeing where the defense is and then drop stepping the other way. Less than three and a half to go. Rush two brothers have played that great on the college level as well. To run and Kareem and inside is Mario Chalmers 54 51 KU seven for Chalmers and once again dribble penetration Kansas turning right into that defense and not allowing themselves to get bumped off of their path. Three minutes to go. And it's batted out of bounds by Chalmers with uh, 19 seconds left on the shot clock. Chalmers making the right hand drive. You can see him just turning right into Mullins and completing that play. Good defense on the out of bounds, but it's into Shaw and he lays it over the rim. 54 53. Nine for Matt Shaw. But just a strong cut by Matt Shaw and Julian Wright got on the low side of him and allowed himself to get knocked off the play. Rush cut off and steal by Mullins with Chalmers to beat, and he misses the layup, and the follow is missed as well. Young bats it out, it goes to KU. How critical was that? Two chances from close range. Rush, Chalmers. Chalmers, and that'll be a blocking foul on Southern Illinois' Matt Shaw. Boy, what a great steal by Brian Mullins. Takes it the other way and just tries to lay it up with that left hand, but Chalmers just getting in his way enough to break his concentration. Tatum couldn't follow it up, and Kansas dodges one there. That would have given Southern Illinois the lead. Instead, it's Mario Chalmers back at the line for KU to build on a one-point advantage. Ooh, another miss. Kansas, much like a team we're going to see in the second game, UCLA, despite their excellent uh, scoring, not a great free throw shooting team. They're only 66.6%. That's number 247 in the nation. They're five for 10 tonight. If Southern Illinois at this point in the game with 220 remaining, if they are able to take a lead, that would put an enormous amount of pressure on this Kansas team. Remember, this Kansas team, the last two years, has been knocked out of the tournament in the first round by mid-majors. Two years ago by Bucknell, last year by Bradley. Don't think that's not in the back of their minds in this one. Sharon Collins is on the floor now for Kansas. Tatum, as he saved a big three, his first of the game for these final deciding minutes. Less than two to go. Shot clock at eight. Tatum, the leader, the senior. Shaw fires from three. In and out. And a whistle underneath as they battle for the rebound. And Darnell Jackson had the position. Foul against Southern Illinois. Tatum will be his third. I think they got Randolph Falker no, on Falker. that play. Tatum wanted the foul, but Falker is the one that is uh, pinched with his fourth. Well, Falker just got to cut his arm in the arm of Darnell Jackson, and Jamal Tatum felt like he had the ball, that he had a jump ball. Into the double bonus now, the Jayhawks. Darnell Jackson, 66% on the season, exactly the team average from the line. And this one to make it a two possession game with 144 to go. Well, how big was that Mullen steal and the inability to convert on the other end. Right down the bottom of the well for Darnell Jackson who has eight points in the game off the bench. A four point lead Kansas. Southern Illinois has been in a lot of tight spots in the Missouri Valley Conference. They have played a great schedule. They have been in this position before but not against a team quite as good as Kansas. Tatum takes it inside, scoops it up there. Not good. Rebound and a foul as Julian Wright came away with the ball and Southern Illinois' Matt Shaw trying to stop him picks up the foul, his second. And Wright also not a great free throw shooter. He's improved his stroke, but shoots only 64% from the line. 
Julian Wright from Chicago Heights went to Homewood Flossmoor. Man that uh, followed his dad and into this game, Paul Vincent, who is the basketball coach at Illinois Tech. Looking for his seventh point. Actually, Chris Lowry, the head coach of Southern Illinois, when he was an assistant to Bruce Weber at Illinois, tried to recruit Julian Wright. Wright migrating to Lawrence to join the Jayhawk band of outstanding players. He goes one for two. That's been consistent throughout the night, but it's a five point deficit staring at Southern Illinois. Young back into the game. No call. It's rule of flop. Tatum looks for a much needed three and hits it. 58 56 with 108 to go. Timeout, Salukis. His first tray of the game, Jamal Tatum. And welcome back to San Jose's HP Pavilion, downtown San Jose, California. Was this a three or a two by Jamal Tatum? Well, it looks like it was a three. Phil Self was asking the referee Tony Green to take a look at the replay because he thought it might have been a two. But Tony Green said, nope, I, I saw it. It was clearly behind. It was a three. There's no question about it and didn't even look at the replay. And I think the official proving out right when you take a look at the replay that that was a three by Jamal Tatum and a big one at that. Tatum would missed his first six from outside the arc. Has 17 tonight, 108 to go. Timeouts, Kansas, Bill Self has three to spend. And the foul situation favors the Jayhawks. They're in the double bonus, although they haven't been able to take advantage, uh, continuing to shoot at about 50% from the charity. And also that possession arrow, Kansas knows that should they be tied up, they keep possession. Full court pressure on the inbounds. Chalmers easily beats it. And the foul will be on Green. Tyrone Green picks up the foul to stop the clock at 104. His second. And San Mario Chalmers to the line. Chalmers a very good free throw shooter. 78%. He's the best on the Jayhawks squad. But four for six tonight. Still a one possession game. Bill Self's wife Cindy agonizing, hiding behind the applause. <laughs> Boy, she has worked that come over tonight. And you just know that Kansas and their players are feeling an extra bit of pressure. It's a different game playing against a team like Southern Illinois than if they were playing one of the big shots because people just don't understand when you get beat by a team like Southern Illinois. As good as they are, it is the, this is an outstanding team. Final minute of play. Three point game. Tatum working hard at 49. Fall oh. away and hits. Oh, how clutch has he been? 19 to lead all scores. Jamal Tatum, a one point game. And 44 seconds, about 11 second shot difference, shot clock difference. And Bill Self wants a timeout to handle this last. 37 seconds, 26 left on his shot clock, but Jamal Tatum, the guts of a burglar. What a player. You see 37.2 seconds remain. 11 second difference in the clocks. Kansas by one. All right, Jay Billis, you're the coach. Here's the situation. Do you foul now or do you just play tough defense and uh, hope you can stop KU? I think you go for the steal right away, Dick. If you don't get the steal, I would think very seriously about fouling and extending this game. Kansas, not a great free throw shooting team. It's a one point game. Even if they were to knock down both, it's still a one possession game. That way you can extend the game. But it depends. You, you don't want to foul Mario Chalmers, although he has missed some free throws in this game. Robinson wouldn't be a bad choice. He shoots about 64%. Julian Wright shooting 63% with the pick. Chalmers. Ooh, a near steal by Young. And another successful drive by Brandon Rush. He's been perfect tonight. Six for six. Final seconds tick away. Shot clock off. 
And Southern Illinois will spend its final timeout. Trailing by three, 17.8 seconds remain. Kansas leading Southern Illinois. Sophomore Brandon Rush, a perfect night from the floor. Six out of six, leading Kansas to a three-point lead. 17 seconds to go. There's always that issue. Do you foul with a three-point lead late in the game? Not, not with this much time. There's 17.8 seconds left. There is way too much time to consider fouling right now. If it's down under five and you got a three-point lead, that's when you pull the trigger on a foul, but not now. That extends the game, and that's exactly what Southern Illinois wants to happen. Southern Illinois needs a three to tie. Do they try to go for a quick two? That's going to take more time now. Statham has to get the ball in the backcourt. Yeah, they do not need a three, but if you can find an open one, you go ahead and take it. Tatum fires, and it's not there. Falker gives the Southern Illinois another chance. Lost the ball. Hesitated on the pass right at the other end. And a foul. Mullins racing down court to save the easy basket with 2.2 seconds left. Falker hesitated on the pass, and it just trickled out of his hands. Well, it was a great offensive rebound going up over the top of Lodrick Stewart, but he just didn't want to throw the ball away, and you got to give a lot of credit to Russell Robinson because he's the guy that jumped out in that passing lane and essentially forced that turnover by Randall Falker. Russell Robinson has been great tonight on both ends of the floor, but especially on the defensive end. No, we're bigger than that. Julian Wright makes this win and it all but seals the win. Oh, pressure on the shoulders of the sophomore from Chicago Heights and Bill Self wants time. 2.2 seconds a lot. Not a lot of time for Southern Illinois. And if Wright makes that free throw, it should be Kansas's night. Julian Wright will be at the line. A second free throw, 61-58. Kansas leads. And uh, setting up the play was Chris Lowry. He's got only 2.2 seconds should Bill Self's right uh, miss this free throw. If Julian Wright were to miss this free throw, you would want a foul. The quick throw to Young. Young to win it. Or to tie it, rather. That three would have tied it. And Bill Self, it was a struggle. And what a defensive war. Self and Lowry with admiration for the way their two teams fought defensively the entire night. And the number one seeds, the Kansas Jayhawks, have advanced to the final eight with a hard-earned 61-58 victory over Southern Illinois. Young from about 40 feet and off the backboard. Southern Illinois had the lead early in the second half, and it seesawed into the late minutes, and Kansas maintains its advantage. The dream ends tonight for the Salukis. Kansas, one of the top teams in the nation, moves on and will beat either Pittsburgh or UCLA for the right to go on to the Final Four. And our Chevrolet players of the game, Jamal Tatum in his final game as a senior with Southern Illinois, 17 second half points to keep uh, the Salukis in the game and Brandon Rush a perfect night six shot attempts six makes to lead the Jayhawks to victory that's the story first game in San Jose let's go to New York and Greg Gumbel all right Dick thank you what a great game in San Jose to start the evening off meanwhile in San Antonio